Today is day 116 of the year of streaming and learning to code. We are continuing on here at Code Academy. We are currently 31% of the way through Ruby. I think we're at section 4. Hashes and... No. Arrays and hashes. We've got data structures and the activity is create a histogram. So let's uh let's just dive right into it. Yeah. Data structures. Let's that sounds, you know, like it could be fun. If if you hated fun and uh this was your only option. This might check that box for some people. Alright. Good, good, good. And we're loading and we're loading. I think we've got what is it, sixteen parts to this second? We yeah, yeah, good, good. 16. All right. Do 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 do. From the top, creating arrays. Earlier, we saw that an array can be used to store a list of values in a single variable. You can stuff any number of numbers in there. You can repeat numbers and they don't have to be in numeric order. Instructions: declare a variable my array in the editor. Set it equal to an array of your choice. Check hint if you need uh, need a syntax refresher. Let's go ahead and steal my array. Do 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 do. Bracket do do do. Uh, one two three. Try that. Next lesson. Access by index. There's some, uh, here's something interesting about arrays. Each element in the array has what's called an index. The first element gets an index 0. The next index uh, gets 1. The one after that gets index 2, and so on. We can access elements of the array directly through these numbers like so. Array 5, 7, 9, 2, 0. Array 2 returns 9 since 9 is at index 2. Okay, diagram below shows how these indices work for our sample array. 5, 7, 9, 2, 0. The first element gets index 0, the next gets 1, 2, and so on. Array, blah, 5 to 0, goes from 0 to 4. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but it gets the idea across for now. We can access the if i ith ith element of do 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 of an array called array demo array is what we'll be working with but called array by putting the index in a square bracket like so array i array zero gets the first element array one gets second element so on access by index those instructions are kind of low let's open the hint doesn't raise them too much, but just enough. Pass the webcam, hopefully. Instructions. Use square bracket notation to print the third value. So that would be 2. Index 2 would be the third element of the demo array in the console. Remember, the third value is at index 2. Oh, look at that. Not at index 3. We start counting indices from 0. Print your code here. Print demo array. So array a female deer. No, no, no. No time to tour the German countryside singing. We have other things that we need to focus on. Do to do, do wow, and I am just all about that shift key today. Holy hell. Can't get a regular bracket if my life counted on it. Do to do to do do to do to do do to do to do 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 I totally blanked on what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Ah, no equals. No equals. And we are doing two. Because they want 300, indice 0 is where we start, so boom, 300 nil. Spectacular. 
All right, hold on. Don't mind me. Messages on the phone. Do 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 do. <clears throat> oh, back to chat. Back to chat. There we go. Chat's back up. Okay. All right. Arrays of non-numbers. Here's something you might not have known. You can make an array of any collection of Ruby objects. You can make an array of Booleans, an array of strings. The list is almost endless. Instructions. Create a new array called string array. Make it an array of strings. Stringy array equals one, two, and three. A, B, B, C, 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 fire away, beautiful, arrays of arrays. You might be asking yourself, if I can put anything in an array, can I make an array of arrays? The answer is yes. Check out the array of arrays we have in the editor. Arrays of arrays are called multi-dimensional arrays since the act of adding more arrays expands the array out of its string-like shape. For instance, the array is the array in the editor is a two-dimensional array. Multi-d array, multi-d array dot each. Zero, 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 another four, and another four. X puts X slash N. All right, so do, 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 for instance, the array. Cool. Can you guess what this two dimensional array will look like if we print it out? Click save and submit code here. Doesn't it make like a grid pattern? Aha! Grid, grid pattern. We were right. We remembered. They thought we forgot, but we didn't. I mean, I can't say that we've remembered everything, but we kind of recalled that. So, half a gold star for Steven. Create your own. See how a two dimensional array with the same number of elements per row and overall rows is a square, an array, like a line, is a one-dimensional, an array of arrays, like a square, is two-dimensional. Create your own two-dimensional array, called My2D Array in the editor. The elements of the inner array can be anything you like, numbers, strings, booleans, so on. Check the hint if you need help. Let's take you, copy, do-do-do, equals... An array. Oh god, what was I holding? Don't hold command and uh, the bracket buttons. That that ends poorly for everyone. Although I believe we're back. You're back on the same the the same lesson we are were on before. No, no. Yeah, we are. Just kidding. Totally lost lost where we were. But everything everything is good now. Uh, bracket. First bracket, then we've got our second, followed by our third. What do we want inside the bracket, though? That's a tough choice. Do we want just numbers? We can do just numbers. One, two, three, two, two. Three, three. Wait a second, wait a second. That's not right. You're confused, you son of a... One, two, two, three, three, three. There we go. One, two, two, comma, three, three, three. There, there we go. That feels much better. One, two, one, two, three. Nice, nice. My soul doesn't feel itchy anymore. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's go ahead and save and submit. Why isn't it on its own individual lines? I think they tell us why. 
or we can look at the hint. Yeah, simple 2D array, okay. Next, caches. They're just going to glance over that. They, they don't even want to go over the fact that it's not in uh, the fun grid form. Let's try that once more. Go back. Oh, I think it was lesson four where we saw the grid. It's probably lesson four. Do, do, do. String array. Beautiful. Next. And here. Multi D array. Let's take this. Copy. Let's try adding that, and we'll do my 2D array. Could be the dot each that's triggering it. No. Close. What if we get rid of that? Submit. Oh, that just that doesn't help anybody at all. That is definitely not what we're looking for. Hmm. Undefined. Maybe it's just the puts. Could be the puts. Do, 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 do. No. I just want to know what's causing him to do that. Or it. Or her. Hmm. Braces help. Damn them and such. See, I don't remember what the uh, other course or lesson was where they went over arrays in somewhat detail, kind of like this. But we ran the array. They showed us the example. It made the awesome grid. We added in our own and we ran it. And then they were like, hey, yours didn't stack, did it? And we said, no, it most certainly did not stack. And then the next lesson was we add this little bit and then it all prints out on everything on its own line. And there was the aha moment. And everyone was happy. But uh, this is this is the opposite of that. This is the sad version where everyone's left confused. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. All right. We've, we've run through this one like six or eight times now. We're going to leave that as a mystery in the meantime. I was just curious if I could piece that nightmare together. But uh, clearly, no. And this is all they wanted because their hint is the same song and dance. All right, so that's as good as that's going to get, which is fine by us because it's good enough for them. Onwards to section six. Hashes. Introduction to hashes. All right. We know that arrays are indexed with numbers that start with zero and go up the array's length minus one. Think about it. An array with four elements has indices one, two, and three. But what if we want to use numeric indices? that don't go in order from zero to the end of the array? What if we want to use the numbers as indices? What if we don't want to use numbers as indices at all? Interesting. We'll need a new array structure called a hash. Hashes are sort of like JavaScript objects or Python dic uh, dictionaries. If you haven't studied those languages, all you need to know is that a hash is a collection of key value pairs Hash syntax looks like this. Oh, so that's all a hash is? It's just the key value directory thing, dictionary stuff? 
I totally thought hashes were something different. I'd, I had no idea what it was, but mm, good. Good to know. Hear that? Oh, no. Little cat? Oh, God. That's the mic. Uh, all right. I'm just... I'm seeing things, apparently. Clearly, someone needs to go outside, although we just came from getting lunch, so... Maybe it's because we didn't eat lunch, we being myself. Mmm. We got the food, but then we needed to do the stream now, because just other plans later today. Could be the lack of food causing the insanity. No one's really sure. Okay, uh, not, not important. Hash is sort of like key value pairs. Hash syntax looks like this. Hash key value, value 1, 2, and 3. Values are assigned to keys using the little arrow moniker. Um, equals greater than. You can use any Ruby object for a key or value. Instructions. We've created a hash in the editor. Meh. To the right. See how it's made up of keys and values. Check it out. Uh, check out the code below it. It should look vaguely familiar. Click save and submit code to see what it'll do. All right. So my hash equals name Eric, age 26, hungry, true. We've seen this example before. Puts my hash name, puts my hash age, puts my hash hungry. Let's hit save and submit. Eric, 26, and true. Fascinating. Trying to think how I could use that for the last printing out the grid. I guess it would be my second array. And then in parentheses, I forget what I put. Is it just the asterisks to include everything? No, the asterisks is for CSS. I don't know. That's okay. Crazy person's choice. Doesn't matter. Next lesson. Ah, oh, reaching for the stars. Got to just focus on what is ahead of us. All right. Using hash dot new. What we just showed. What we just showed you was a hash. Uh, was hash literal notation. We call it that because you literally describe what you want in the hash. You give it a name, and you set it equal to a bunch of key value pairs inside curly braces. You can also create a hash using hash.new, like so. My hash equals hash.new. Setting a variable equal to hash.new creates a new empty hash. It's the same as setting the variable equal to empty curly braces. All right, instructions. Use hash.new to create a new hash called pets. Hash must be capitalized or Ruby won't know what you're talking about. So hash.new for pets. So pets equals hash.new. Seems okay. Cool. Yeah, there was the empty curly braces. Adding to a hash. We can add to a hash two ways. If we create it using uh if we created it using literal notation, we can simply add a new key value pair directly between the curly braces. If we use hash.new, we can add to the hash using bracket notation. Pets equals hash.new. Pets Stevie equals cat. This adds the key Stevie with the value cat to the hash. Um, do, 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 do. Add pets. Add a pet to your pet's hash. Can be any key that you pair you like. Three. Well, we'll do it on line two. Um, do, 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 do. Is it just it's pets, plural? Little kitty. Although I think she's sleeping in the other room right now. <clears throat> Equals. Cat. 
Uh, mostly good. Mostly good. Cat. Beautiful. Next lesson. We are on 9 of 16. You just passed the halfway point. I guess we're at the halfway point. I mean, 8 of 16 would be half. Not important. We just finished 8. We're good. We're good. Assessing hash values. You can access values in a hash just like an array. Pets, Stevie, Cat, Bowser, Hamster, Kevin Sorbo, Fish. Puss Pets, Stevie will print Cat. In the example above, we create a hash called Pets, then we print Cat by accessing the key Stevie in the Pets hash. Instructions. Access the key value pair you added to pets, just like step two in the example above. Use puts to print that value to the console. Hint, to print a value associated with a key, my key, in a hash called my hash, you'd write puts my hash my key. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Good, good. Uh, I totally focused on the hint and ignored the instruction, and then I realized I did. I, I yeah, good. Uh, this we're in a state of confusion. Focus on the instruction. What's happening? Who's driving this thing? Access the key value pair you added to pets, just like you did in step two. Access the key value pair. You added two pets just like you did, just like step two in the example above. Use puts to print that value to the console. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just printing little kitty. That's all I had to say. Print, print your stuff. Well, puts. Puts your stuff. To be more accurate. Puts. Pets. <laughs> Little kitty. Ta da! We birthed a cat. Look at that. Good, good team effort. All right, iterating. Reintroduction to iteration. Remember when we covered loops and iterators? Let's find out. Let's click that link. We might remember. Who's asking? I think it's Code Academy. Well, it's not really loading, so I'm thinking of, yeah, yeah, we got green check marks across the board. No, no biggie. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. We conquered the yeah, loops. All right. Time to get loopy. Actually, no. Scratch that. Time, time to get iterate -y. Regardless, we could use a whole bunch of different methods for looping in a program. When we loop over an array or a hash, we say that we iterate over it. We'll be using the dot each iterator to iterate over arrays and hashes in this section. Take a look at the code in the editor to see one example of how we might go about this. Instructions. When you think you understand the code in the editor, click Save and Smith, see the code in action. We've got friends, Millhouse, Ralph, Nelson, Otto. Good, good. We're, so we're in one of the many Springfields across the United States. Family, Homer, Dad, Marge, Mom, Lisa, Sister, Maggie, Sister, Abe, Grandpa, Santa's Little Helper, Dog. Friends dot each, X puts X. Family dot each, X, Y puts X colon Y. So... This is just an array, single dimensional array, versus this would be a hash. Hmm. 
multi dimensional no 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 multi dimensional is is arrays within arrays this is just a hash but the x and y will it print both the key and the value i'm thinking it'll print both the key and the value Yeah, good. Okay, so that X was just all the single stuff. And then here, it had X and Y, which was a retang under the sun. Awesome, awesome. Um, Let's go ahead and keep marching forward. Next lesson, 11 of 16. We are inching our way forward. Iterating over arrays. Iterating over arrays is easier than it looks. Numbers 1 through 5, number dot each. Element, what's element? In the example above, we create an element called numbers with five elements. Then we say, take this array for each element, print it to the console. As usual, we can use any placeholder name for the bit between the two vertical pipe characters. Instructions. Use the dot each iterator to put out each element of the language's array. Make sure to use puts instead of print so that each element is on its own line. Okay, we've got languages, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Python, and Ruby. We will now be doing languages, languages equals no bad steven languages dot each curly nonsense vertical pipiness space puts not print and then whatever whatever we are calling it by we will call it l because we can puts l I think is we're printing whatever we're referring to the elements as. That's our, our little temporary variable. As long as we reference it, should be good. Yes, screen check mark in your face, Code Academy. Deal with it. All right, 12 of 16. Hot damn. We got that last one on the first try. Almost, almost impressive. Not quite impressive yet. Still a lot of struggling and confusion, but we haven't lit any cities on fire yet, and no one's lost a limb, so this kind of almost counts as a win. Iterating over multi-dimensional arrays. Now let's see how to over uh, now let's see how to iterate over a multi-dimensional array. We've created a 2D array, S for sandwiches. Ah, here. Good, the S sandwich array. The classic infamous sandwich array example. <clears throat> we want to iterate over S in such a way that we don't print out each element like ham comma Swiss, but each element within each element. What, 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 what? We don't want to print out each element like ham, Swiss, but each element within each element. So we get a list of all the meats and all the cheeses within S. If we just wanted to access Swiss, we could type S01. Oh, okay, because we're referencing the S array. The first zero is index zero which would be the first array, so the whole array would be 0. This next array would be 1, and then 2, and then within the array, which is the second number, is the actual element. So ham would be 0 as a whole, and 0 for the second, but we're shooting for 0 as a whole and 1, which is the second element, ergo... Swiss. Okay, cool. Meaning, bring me the second element of the first element, 
which is Swiss, if we iterate over a regular array using array.each element action, then how might we iterate over and how might we iterate over an array of arrays? So this is normal stuff. Array.each element action. I assume we just use the formatting here, drop this into into the action area puts out every element inside the sub arrays inside s print out we'll use puts but in human words print out every element inside the sub arrays so info within each inside s we need to get all the meats and all the cheeses out of the array. That's our mission. <clears throat> Rescue the meats and cheeses. This is a high, high risk scenario. So iterate through dot each element in the S array, call the elements sub array, then iterate through dot each sub array and puts out their item. It sounds like they want me to do dot each again within the element. Because we're calling each on, we're calling dot each on S. And they're saying call the element subarray, but they're also saying iterate through each subarray, so dot each. So this is going to kind of trickle down within itself. S dot each early stuff puts not print and we'll figure out what we're dropping in there. <clears throat> um do 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 rock uh sub array dot each and then puts well, this would be the same thing as last time. If we're going through everything, whatever variable or temporary name we select in the element is what we want to reference when we go to print or puts. So it would be the same thing again. What's the hell? What is Ari? That is not English. That's going to end in a big fat error. There we go. Let's try that. Something went horribly wrong. Dear God. God, what was it? Hmm. S dot each curly vertical pipes subarray dot each puts subarray dot each. Something, something, something. Maybe it was the formatting. Maybe it's just subarray. We'll get rid of that. Try it again here. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, we were a failure. I get it. Dot each. What did the... Oh. Dot each. What did the error message have to say? It said, Your syntax doesn't look quite right. Check the hint if you need help. <clears throat> Syntax error, expected comma stuff, subarray dot each, put subarray. Uh, unexpected T identifier, or nothing of use to me that I could view. So hint, what is all this nonsense? S each do what the f your nested dot each is should look li something like this. At what point we've been going through Ruby for like four ish, maybe five days now, not exactly flying through. When had they referenced this notation for this example? At any point. Have they gone through? No? Anyone? Probably not. 
Am I crazy to jump to this conclusion after the last 12 sections and three to four previous days leading up to this? I think not. Ridiculous. Okay, so we've got S each do subarray subarray dot each do y puts y end and then end again. And we've got nothing. Nothing even close to that. So let's try and fix this nightmare because Humpty Dumpty is just been it's like he took a nuke to the face. This is this is an abomination. Um sub array We don't need the curly stuff. Do 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 Subarray dot each. It would have been a thousand years before I would have figured that out. Actually, it would have been a thousand years and I wouldn't have figured it out. Y puts Y and I mean visually it makes sense it's just what's confusing to me is why they didn't even hint at the fact that we would be doing indented notation and this the, the tiered all that stuff you know what I mean right who are they trying to trick Save and submit. Oh, of course. That works beautifully the first time. Would have been nice if this was up here. They didn't need to put exactly that. They could have hinted with their kind of somewhat misleading examples. The examples are we get that it's the examples. That's I've narrowed it down. That's what it is. The little short story stuff is, is fine. Even the questionable instructions are relatively okay. What really throws me off the most is the examples they use and how they differ from what they ask for in the instructions. Because then you end up with situations like this where it turns out you're, you're nowhere close to the right answer. I'm nowhere close to the right answer. That's what I've been running into. It's taken 116 days to zero in specifically on, on what exactly is the cause of the confusion. That's the majority of it. All right. And that's probably my fault. Or, hmm, what's a good word? Misappropriating the examples. But regardless... We will continue on <clears throat> 13 of 16. We are on the edge, almost. We're nearing the edge of being done with this section. Iterating over hashes. When iterating over hashes, we need two placeholder variables to represent each key value pair. Restaurant menu, noodles, four, soup, three, salad, two. Restaurant menu, each, do, I'd, oh. Now they now they reference it. Now that's okay. They couldn't have done that before. Doesn't matter. Move on, Steven. Let it go. Let it go. We've got a whole year of frustration ahead of us. <clears throat> Restaurant menu dot each do item price puts item price end. In the example above, we create a new hash called restaurant menu. Two, then we loop through the restaurant menu hash and assign the key to item and the value to price for each iteration. Finally, we puts out noodles four, soup three, salad two. Instructions one, use dot each to iterate over the secret identities hash. Use puts to print each key value separated by a colon and a space. Meh. To the console, just like the example above. All right. 
So we have secret identities. We've got Batman, Bruce Wayne, Superman, Clark Kent, Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, and Freakazoid, Dexter Douglas. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. What are, where are we going first? So we're going to do secret identities. Copy. Dot each. Do. We're going to have. What do we want to call them? Hero versus person. Hero, comma, person. I guess would be alias versus name, or alias and real name. We'll go with hero and person for now, though. Uh, do to do puts. In quotes, we've got curly stuff, followed by a colon, with a space, followed by more curly stuff. Oh, don't forget the hashtag. Hero. And Bersen. Okay. Doop to do do. End. Is that really it? Is that all that's needed? Save and submit. Green check mark. Z Batman, Bruce Wayne, Superman, Clark Kent, Wonder Woman, Diana Prince, Freakazoid, Dexter Douglas. Cool, cool, cool. Onwards to review 14, 15, and 16. All right. Multi-dimensional arrays. Great work. You've learned a lot in this lesson. Let's do a little review to be sure you really know your stuff. Instructions. Create your own multi-dimensional array called my array in the editor. Copy my array equals the elements of the innermost array can be anything you like. Number, string, boolean, and so on. Click the hint if you need help. Multi-dimensional array would be one. Two. Uh, do we need three? I think we're going to be fine. Let's do A, comma, B, B, A, comma. You know, we don't need to do that. We can have different stuff. One, two, two. All right. Save and submit. Oh, God, we did something wrong. Nobody move. Nobody move. Oh, it's the string. We're missing. It's confused, and it doesn't like anything we said. And rightfully so. That's better. Look at that. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay. Um, do 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 Hashes. Good. Good. Now, let's create a hash. Feel free to use either hash literal notation or hash dot new. Prices, apple blah, banana blah, kiwi blah, sounds equals hash dot new, sounds dog equals wolf, sounds cat equals meow. I disagree. Uh, instructions, create a hash called my hash in the editor. Give it at least one key value pair. We're, we're going we're gonna to do them one better. We're going to give it two key value pairs. That's right. Living on the edge. Uh, what what are we gonna do though? What are we gonna do? Um, do 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 do. Ash equals curly stuff. Curly stuff. Do 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 curly stuff. Do 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 do. Here comes spider pig. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. Spider pig. Spider pig. Does whatever Spider Pig does. Here comes Spider Pig. Duh. 
na 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 beautiful beautiful see that theme song stuff all right and lastly we're gonna do <clears throat> um what are we gonna do we'll do little kitty is a cat again little liddy no no little see she's napping still in the other room can you believe it we've made it this long without interference from her shocking okay okay <laughs> and at yes yes no we'll do meow two question marks very concerned <clears throat> uh let's go ahead and run that oh why create a hash Oh, called my hash, you son of a... You're just... Doing whatever you want on the internet, Steven. The hell are you thinking? Why are they... Why is there so much anger over here? Syntax. Unexpected string. Oh, it's the comma. There's a lack of comma in this universe. Okay, they don't believe in semicolons, but they do believe in commas. Save and submit. Boom. Spider pig. Da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na 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 -na. Good, good, good. Okay, little kitty. Meow. Question mark. Beautiful. Onwards. We solved that. Okay, lastly. 16 of 16. The final hurrah. For now, kind of. We're still going to decide if we do uh, the activity stuff afterwards. The histogram? Sounds messy. We're going to deal with this. Iterating over a hash. We've done a fair amount of iteration over arrays. So to finish it up, let's review how to iterate over a hash. Numbers, 1 through 5. Number dot each. Element puts element. Instructions, iterate through each key value pair in lunch order please puts out the value of each pair just the value not the key get a hint i i think it's gonna be why we specify both so we'll do name and order and then we only print out order you should print out yeah blah 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 you know we're just gonna follow our instinct my downfall is overthinking, so I'm going to do my best to not overthink the code. And hopefully we end up with something decent. So, uh, if, if this were Ruby, and we needed to code something, I would start with lunch order <clears throat> dot each do... Name, comma, order. Well, it's, it's only since it's just one array, not a multi-dimensional <laughs> array. I would just do puts. Actually, I don't think I need to specify... The name, do I don't think I need to do all this weird shit. I think I can just do this. That makes sense. Yeah, we're just gonna, yeah, don't, don't mind the crazy person. Don't mind me overthinking it. Order.
put order. Let's give that a shot. That if it doesn't like that, then we'll do the whole ugly thing. But I'm pretty sure that was just for uh, iterating through multi-dimensional arrays. Okay, yeah, we got everything. Looks like you're printing your hashes key. Only print the values. Blah 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 and blah blah blah. Fine. Uh, let's do. Maybe we can still do it this way. Name, comma, order, and just print order. Ha! Deal with it, Code Academy. We're going to run that again. I want to revel in the glory of the badge I earned. Deal with it. That's right. Earned badge, data structures. They thought I was going to fail. I mean, that was not pretty by any means. We barely survived that. But, uh, yeah, we did it nonetheless. We're going to go ahead and close out of that. Congratulations, you finished this course. Good, good. So next. All right, up next, create a histogram. In this project, we'll write a program that reads a block of text and tells us how many times each word appears. Cool. So start next lesson. <clears throat> Let's see. How many sections we have? It's like 35. This is going to have to wait for tomorrow. But. All right. It's only eight. And usually they show the whole project on the first page. That doesn't look too bad. Looks like we could definitely mess that up quite a few times. But uh, I think I think we should be good. We should be good. <clears throat> All right, so let's tackle this. Hey, it's uh, it's apples again. Back on Ruby. Yes, we are. We are continuing. We just finished the uh, the like lesson portion for today. Now we're on to the activity that they have. Creating a histogram. Just got into it. And we are going to continue from the top. So, what you'll be building. In this project, we'll build a program that takes a user's input, then builds a hash from that input. Each key in the hash will be a word from the user. Each value will be the number of times that word occurs. For example, if our program gets the string, the rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane, it will return... The two falls one on one, mainly one, in one, rain one, plane one, Spain one. Good. A visual representation of data like this is called a histogram. Okay. Good, good, good. Instructions. Hit save and submit code to start building your own histogram. Oh. Nice is used for something called inverse indexing. Search algorithms. Similar way, this challenge. Noted. Lul. L O O L. All right. Onwards. So, hold on. We didn't even look at. We've got puts. Actually, we're just going to refresh that page. Hold the phone. Okay. Before we hit save and cement, bring the gander at the text. So, puts text please. Text equals gets chomp. Words equal text dot split. Frequencies equals hash dot new. Zero. Words dot each. Word is the element. Frequencies word plus equals one. Frequencies equals frequency dot sort by a comma b and b by itself. Frequencies dot reverse and then frequencies dot each. Word comma frequencies and then puts word plus the space. 
plus frequency two dot two underscore s. All right, so that's everything we're going to be dealing with. So save and submit. We get our text, please. This is text. We'll do lowercase text. Text one, this one. Ah, text one is one, this one. Text is this. <clears throat> All right, onwards. You know the drill. You know by now you've got to start, or you know by now how we've got to start. We need to get the input from the user. Get a put statement to prompt the user for input. Use gets.chomp to save the input into a variable called text. Do do do. Copy so we have puts some string text stuff. And then we have text equals get chomp. Save and submit. <laughs> uh, we should do real words. Beautiful. We need to hit enter. There we go. Ta da. All right. Three, eight. Building the words array. Next, we want to turn the user's string into something we can iterate over. A data structure made up of elements all in a line. You say, that sounds like an array. By calling the dot split method on text, we can transform it into an array. Instructions declare a variable called words and set it equal to the results of calling dot split on text. So we will have words equals text dot split. Oh, we had, there we go. Copy that text dot split. Run that text stuff. This is more text. Ta-da, this is more text. Green check mark, four of eight, creating the frequencies hash. Good, now let's start counting words using a hash. We'll want to make sure the hash has a default value. H equals hash dot new, nothing here. What's H? Puts, puts H, kitty, nothing here. All right. One, in the example above, we create a new empty hash called H that has a default value of nothing here. Then we print out the empty curly brace. The value of H just shows that H really is empty. Then we print out nothing here as we try to access the value stored by the key kitty. If you have a hash, with a default value, and you try to access a non-existent key, you'll get that default value. Okay. So, create a hash called frequencies in the editor and give it a default value of zero. Can you guys see? That seems a little low. We'll crack open the hint and bump it up. Ah, here's a freebie. You should create frequencies. You should, okay. Oh, they want us to use the hash dot new instead of literal. You know what? That's right. They did. They had hash new on uh, page one as well. So, and it's shorter. We're just assigning it zero. There's no need to have it in literal notation. Do 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 do, do hash dot new. So we are doing create a hash called frequencies, which equals hash dot new. Zero. All right. Since submit more text. Ta da. Empty. Next lesson iterating over the array. Perfect. Next up, we want to iterate over words to each 
to add each word to our frequencies hash one at a time. Colors, red, two. Blue, three. Color blue plus equals one puts color blue. In the above example, we first create a hash mapping strings to... Uh, uh, to mm -hmm. Hold on. Wrong. Train wreck. One. In the example above, we first create a hash mapping strings to integers. Two. Then we increment the value stored by blue by one. And three. Finally, we print out four, the value stored by blue. Okay. Good, good, good. Instruction. Hold on. Up. One. Use dot each to iterate over the words array. For each word we find, assume the word itself is a key in frequencies and increment its value by one. This is why our default is zero. The first time we find the word, it will have the default value of zero that we can increment up to one. Take a look at the hint if you need help. Hint the action. <sighs> Ugh, can't breathe. Damn, damn, damn. That's okay. Breathing's for winners, and we're not done yet. We can breathe when we're finished. <clears throat> the action we want is to update the hash with a key equal to the word, then increment its value by one. Each key will be frequencies word, and then we can increment using plus one. So, frequencies... Word plus equals one, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Use dot each. I think I jumped ahead. Use dot each to iterate over the words array. For each word we find, Assume that the word itself is a key in frequencies and increment its value by one. This is why our default is zero. The first time we find the word, take a look. Okay, okay, so it's either words.each equals frequency word, or we're doing frequency word.each. Bring it on this, see what we get. Text, text. Undefined, yeah, good, good. So we're gonna do words dot each equals. Well, that's not right because then we've got our plus equals there. This is bad. Confusion setting in, starting to overthink. It's all falling apart. Is it words.each or word? It's word. Maybe that was our issue. The fact that it should be words instead of just word. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, hold on, hold on. Words. One. Looks like you've only set the frequencies hash. It looks like you haven't set check the hint if you need help. At least that ran stuff. So words dot each colossal failure copy insert apple Words do. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Okay.
words dot each do word. I am struggling. <laughs> I am concerned because of the, the I just the damn I don't know. I rely on their examples and like it's not their instructions and their examples don't seem to line up in my mind. I just I think I have a different mindset than whoever wrote the instructions. I just struggle. Also their hint I don't know. It's me. Struggling. Thank God I do this every day. Can you imagine? Because even forgetting stuff that I learned yesterday, this is why I'm glad I'm doing this every day. Because I know if I were to go like even a couple days or a week or a month between trying to do activities on Code Academy, it would just be brutal. It would be even worse. And it's already pretty bad with me doing it daily. All right, so... Words.h do so hold on why the frequency don't mind me they had they referenced this in their hint uh right and I'll I'll grab the hint right here so what exactly were they trying to to get at with their hint the action we want, so in regards to all of that, use the dot each to iterate over the words and blah, blah, blah. And that's great and tons of fun, which is what will be going down here. Word. But for their hint, the action we want is to update the hash with a key equal a word, then increment its value by one. Each key will be frequency word. And we can increment using plus equals one. So I ended up putting frequencies word plus equals one. Am I just way too literal? I think I'm just way too. I think there was some subtlety, some reading between the lines. And all I did was just read the lines. Loop over words. And for every word, put it in the frequencies hash. You set the value in the hash like hash key equals value. Okay. So for that's the I know the hash literal is with this is the non this is what not dot notation, but it was some some other one. This is the non literal version. For hashes in Ruby, so is that basically what I'm doing? But for word, uh, for words and frequencies, right now, is I'm feeding it back in with the kind of like doesn't matter. It's exactly the same. Okay, okay. I think I'm getting to to slowly to where it'll end up. So doing hash dot new yeah you're just putting the value keys okay okay and i'm trying to shove words into frequencies so that means i would do 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 do, do. it would be words each do word actually i wouldn't and then it would be blah blah yeah and now i'm drawing a blank it was just back a few
Oh, it was the equal arrows. We just came out of it. Why, God? Oh, you know what? I can just do this. Right? I think. Perfect. Now we want to iterate over words to add each word to our frequencies. So we'll have frequencies and we want to add words. Word into frequencies. I'm so confused. Why, God, why? Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Not the forum. Just the last lesson. Data structures. Do, 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 do. Probably should be iterating over hashes. There's that. Next. Pets equals hash dot new. Next. That's what it is. So it's equals. So that's what we want. So we want frequencies, words, So, I want words to go into frequencies. You're not iterating over a hash, you're iterating over an array. Yes, that. Frequencies, word, plus one. But I, I did the... So, yeah, we've got, we've got this. So, that's what this guy is. Okay. Okay, frequency word plus one, not words, singular, thus the no S, gotcha. Yeah, I, was, I was staring at that earlier because it's the word you're currently on in the loop. So it's whatever you put in these. Thus, that's what you were saying. And I think probably not. And also, let me clear out this. Pretty sure I'm still off, but oh no, that's right. Huh, that's beautiful. Fantastic. That's correct. Dear God. This is like guiding a cat by smoke signals. Apples, you deserve a badge. You do. I don't think they've got honorary badges here at Code Academy that I can pass out. They really should. You are, you are dedicated. All right. Apples saves the day yet again. Onwards. Six of eight. So we're doing, we're, we're pretty close to the end. Although if it's like section five, this could be another three days. Hopefully we don't get confused and overthink it again. All right. Sorting the hash. Great. We have a hash full of words, frequency key value pairs. Now we need to figure out a way to get our information in the order we want it. So we've got color equals, or colors, blue equals three, green is one, two, red, uh, red is two. Colors equals color dot sort by do color, comma, count. It counts, then it ends, and then we've got colors dot reverse with an exclamation one in the example above first we create a hash called colors that maps the colors to strings uh the color strings to numbers 
Okay, we've got color strings. We're mapping them to the numbers. Two, then we sort the colors into green, red, and blue from smallest to largest by count. Just so you know, the dot sort by function returns an array of arrays, but that's fine for our purposes. Cool, good to know. And then three, finally, we reverse the array order so that the colors with the largest counts are first. All right, so we're sorting in general just to get everything lined up, and then we're reversing it. Can you do the same thing with frequency hash? We can certainly try. All right, one, use dot sort by to sort the frequencies hash by count, like in step two above. Eh. Store the results back in frequencies. That's the trick that I'm going to struggle with. Use dot reverse to reverse the stored frequencies array. Okay, so the sorting by should be okay. Reverse bit, there's potential for failure. Actually, no, the sorting should be fine. It's going to be the restoring it back into frequencies that I feel questionable about. Hint, our first step should be to resign frequencies to its sorted version. Dot sort by doesn't sort the hash in place. It will create a copy that is sorted. So frequencies equals frequency sort by. Oh, K comma B. This was that A, B, A comma B, and then B was a straggler on page one. Remember? No, perhaps not. I remember it. All right. This actually returns, so that was frequencies. Sure. This actually returns an array of values, which you can then reverse in place with reverse. All right. So all we're doing is basically exactly that. So let's do copy frequencies will be equal to frequencies dot sort by and then we've got our curly brace. We use word there. What they used in, I believe, the vertical bars on page 1a, comma b, just for some consistency. They had b again, which was the, I think, the value, which will be the numbers, like blue, three, green, one. I think that b will be referencing because I think a will be the word and then b will be the value and we'll be we'll be dealing with the value so hopefully i think probably confused probably wrong uh and then we'll have frequencies reversed copy frequencies dot reversed exclamation pretty sure i'm missing stuff a, B, B, C, 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 D, 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 undefined, I broke something, I did what wrong, I did, Oh, and they've got it on one line. So they had words dot each, so I can I can get rid of the end bit. So they've got words dot each. Frequencies dot sort by. And frequency dot reverse. We can we'll use this for reference. We'll jump back. Six apples. Oh, reverse, not reversed. Damn, damn, damn. 
uh, also there were more. Uh, yeah, A is the word. B is the value. You're right. That's good. That helps. That's comforting. You're telling it what to sort by. Oh, so interesting. So it's sorting by the value. So I'm, we're, we're identifying, we're telling it to sort by, this is the information it has, A and B. We're telling it to sort by B. Cool. That's good. That's fun. See, was that that hard? They could have easily said that in here. You were able to say it in a matter of seconds, but no, uh -uh. They got all these colors, numbers lying around. We're just stewing in confusion. Damn them. All right, so uh, reversed is a lie. It's just reverse. Mostly this. Ta-da! Very cool. Now I do. I did like the fact that there was a theirs was a little more streamlined. So they had words each. Although visually, I kind of like seeing it this way. Mentally and visually, I can easy. I can more easily process what the hell I'm staring at. I actually think I'm going to leave that. I think I'm going to leave it that way. All right, save and submit. Do to do, A, B, B, C, C, C. Good, good, good. Iterating over the hash. Almost there. Finally, we need to iterate over the array to print out each key value pair to the console. Fruit, apple, two, banana, three, cherry, five. Fruit dot each do. Name count, puts, name, plus, the space, plus, count, dot, two, s. End. In the example above, we create a hash called fruit that maps names of fruit to the amount that we owe. Two, then we iterate over, dot, each, key, value, pair, storing the key as the name and the value as the count. Three. Finally, we print out the key and the valuated separated by a space. Note that we must first convert the value from a number to a string. Oh, that's what the dot two s is using dot two underscore s before we concatenate it. Interesting. That's what's going down. Very clever. Mystery solved. Cool, cool, cool. Um. Yes, see, this is, okay, and well, we made it through the story time. We'll raise the instructions a little. Uh, yeah, see, this is what I was saying yesterday about the difference between using the curly braces and do end. It's how it reads. Doing it on one line is cool, but sometimes it just looks nicer. Good, good, agreed. Yes, especially, um... Learning, like visually seeing the breakdown and the indentation, no, it's still basic. I can piece together visually looking at it on one line, but just for now it seems more comfortable, for lack of a better phrase, dealing with that, at least this early on. Um, all right, so instructions, iterate over dot each key value pair in the frequencies hash, then puts each word, a single space, and its frequency to the console, like in the example above. It should look something like this, blah, 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 which we just saw on page one again. Frequencies dot each do word frequencies, and then puts word plus great, great. And uh, we are going to do the multi-line, just like in their example below, instead of the single line. So we've got... Copy frequencies dot each do vertical stuff word comma frequencies uh, frequency and do to do to do enter puts not print right yeah puts good good 
put word plus forgot the shift we need a space and a plus and frequency dot to underscore s followed by end hot damn let's, let's do this let's give that a go this oh caps lock this is some text enter thinking about it Boom! This is some text and stuff. Stuff one, and one, text one, someone, is one, and this. Fantastic. Next lesson, eight of eight. You did it. Nice work. Your program is complete. Run it a few times. See how it counts up the number of occurrences of each word in your strings. Once you click save and submit code, you're done. Take a moment to bask in the glow of your victory before moving on to your next programming adventure. Way cool. Puts text stuff. Text gets chomp. Word text split. Frequencies hash new. Words each do word frequency word plus equals one and frequency equals frequency dot sort by blah 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 frequency dot reverse followed by frequency dot each do word frequency and the concatenation fan friggin tastic we made our histogram ta da. Go ahead and enter that. Beautiful. Good times. Created a histogram. Tons of fun. Apples, thank you for all the never-ending support throughout my constant struggles. Greatly appreciate it. All right, we will we'll take gander at what is on the horizon for tomorrow. Day 117 as day 116 is about to come to an end. Methods, blocks, and sorting. In this lesson, we'll cover how to define our methods in Ruby, as, we, as well as how to use blocks to develop powerful strong, uh, sorting algorithms. Good, good, good. We are, we are totally running out of uh, mental energy. Just our capacity to read is, is dwindling. Not, not that great, even, even when we're running at full capacity. Why methods? A method is a reusable section of code written to perform a specific task in a program. You might be wondering why you need to separate your code into methods rather than just writing everything out in one big chunk. It turns out there are a few good reasons to divide your programs into methods. One, if something goes wrong in your code, it's much easier to find and fix bugs if you've organized your program well. Assigning specific tasks to separate methods helps with disorganization. Two, by assigning specific tasks to separate methods, an idea computer scientists call separation of concerns, you make your program less redundant and your code more reusable. Not only can you repeatedly use the same method in a single program without rewriting it each time a cat comes on your desk, but you can even use that method in another program. Three, when we learn more about objects, you'll find out there are a lot of interesting things we can do with methods in Ruby. More on that tomorrow. Little Kitty, you are here in the time, just in time to finish the stream. Try not to step on anything. Let's see stat-wise where we stand for today. Code Academy. Watch your toes, furry demon. <laughs> Disgusting. All right, currently we are finishing out day 116 at 42% of the way through Ruby with 1,355 points and... Hey, no, no. Uh, and 190 badges. Good, good times. We're going to go ahead and close out back out all this fun thank you again 
to anyone and everyone who may have stopped by the stream. Apples, thank you once more for all of your help and assistance and guidance today and the previous days as well. And uh, that's that's about it for today. So good, good times. Day 117 on the horizon for tomorrow. It's coming. All right. Are you sure you want to stop the stream? Hell yeah. Kill it.